all these immunotherapies that they're giving for people to suppress their immune systems that they're advertising on TV all the time for multiple illnesses like uh, psoriasis or, um, or joint disease and uh, even Crohn's and, and ileitis. And so, you know, a lot of these people can't get the vaccine or if they get the vaccine, they say, well, I don't get antibodies. What does that mean? What, if they don't get antibodies, do they get T cell immunity? And like, what's the difference between T cell immunity and antibodies? Right. So that's a great question. And the answers to that are not 100% clear by any stretch. But when we, when we use these vaccines, they develop a B cell response and a T cell response, okay? So the B cell response uh, are the cells that go and make antibodies. And you can do a blood test. One caveat I need to point out is that not all blood tests test for the specific antibodies that are generated by any particular vaccine. So a lot of people are going and getting their blood test to check their antibody. And if they happen to get a blood test that doesn't test for the specific antibody that's produced, they may have a negative test, even though they have a very good antibody response. So you need to make sure that your doctor checks to make sure that, yes, this particular blood test, for example, LabCorp decided to change their test so that they would, be, they would pick up the Pfizer antibody that's produced. Having said that, patients that... Uh, you develop the B cell responses as an antibody, and then the B cells work together with the T cells, okay? So the T cells uh, are part of what we call cell-mediated immunity. So cell-mediated immunity uh, are, is a type of immune system or immune problems that people, for example, the most severe version probably is HIV. So patients that have very severe HIV have very poor cell-mediated mediated immunity, puts them at risk for certain kinds of infections, uh, like pneumocystis or malignancies like Kaposi's sarcoma and a myriad of other problems that define HIV disease. When you get these vaccines, uh, it's very, and let me just say one other thing is measuring T cell function is a lot more complicated than checking an antibody level. But when you get these, v these vaccines, particularly the uh, mRNA vaccines, they generate a very, very robust B cell and T cell response. And just because you don't have identif identifiable B cell response doesn't mean that you don't have good T cell mediated immunity that's very important in helping protect you from this disease. Having said that, we also do know that patients that have compromised immunity will respond less effectively to these vaccines. We see that with flu shots. And because of the flu shots, we now have the, uh, the version of the flu shot for people over age of 65 that's much more potent. And as the next generation of COVID shots come out, there's probably gonna be very special shots that are generated for certain populations. They may find the J&J &J vaccine is excellent, every bit as good as the mRNA vaccines for people under the age of 35, or just for example. And they may say, decide that the Pfizer and uh, the Moderna products are better for people with certain demographics. Um, I don't know where you're headed with this question, but it is not recommended that you stop taking your medication. That's something that really needs to be carefully uh, reviewed with your, with your physician. Um, but we do recommend that patients that are compromised uh, are extra cautious going forward and wear the masks and do their social distancing. I know we're gonna talk about this a little bit later, sure. uh, but it is true that patients that are on these immune modulating drugs may not develop the same degree of protective antibody like young people. Um, although these vaccines are extremely effective, 95% effective overall, even in higher risk groups. Great. Thank you very much.